If you've ever worked an office job, you've probably experienced all the typical trappings of being a corporate wage slave. Sitting for eight hours at a cubicle, uncomfortable lunches with irritating coworkers, and useless meetings which, of course, feature a PowerPoint presentation. Indeed, research has shown that most workplace meetings do very little to increase productivity, and just seeing the first slide of a poorly executed PowerPoint intensifies this particularly mundane form of dread. But despite the fact that most 9 to 5 workers agree that PowerPoints kinda suck as a tool to convey information, we just keep right on using them. What gives? What's the deal? Well, it helps to know what the point of PowerPoint originally was. Before we were all looking at bullet points on digital projectors, workplaces had to use old-fashioned contraptions, such as vacation photo-style slides, projectors, which you probably remember from high school, or chalkboards. But despite the fact that making presentations for these devices was time-consuming, hundreds of millions of presentation slides were being created every year. And even though software and equipment that could show PowerPoint-like presentations were around before the 1980s, they were very expensive. However, once the personal computer started becoming widespread, software developers quickly figured out that using them to show visual aids in the workplace made both giving and creating presentations much quicker and easier. And since people were already used to the slides presentation paradigm, Programmers already had an idea for what presentation programs should look like. So lots of presentation programs came out for the PC in the 1980s, with PowerPoint hitting the scene in 1987. And while this did make it much easier for workers at all levels to share thoughts with colleagues, the problem was that no one really knew how to use it. I mean, think about the options most people are familiar with when creating a PowerPoint. You can choose a fancy looking background, embed animations to your heart's content, or even throw in some word art. But while all this stuff can be flashy, it often doesn't do a great job conveying information. Yet presentation programs tend to emphasize these bells and whistles, not what's going to get the point across most effectively. And even if you skip these options, there are user errors too, like cramming way too much information onto one slide. I know we've all done it. While you've probably seen this any given board meeting or college lecture, this exact problem was actually implicated in the Space Shuttle Columbia disaster back in 2003. You see, a presentation for NASA actually contained information about the defect that caused the shuttle to ultimately explode, but it was buried far down on a slide which was mostly a wall of text that actually started out on a positive note, meaning no one paid much attention to it. But this example highlights not only that PowerPoint slides often contain too much or too little information to be helpful, but that it's also been roundly criticized for making people too passive with how they learn or absorb new concepts. I mean, it's almost as if a linear presentation where slides come out one after the other is too straightforward. Instead of getting viewers to engage with the material, the software's fundamental paradigm seems to reward passive learning, as a result of the audience being too distracted by a shoddily made slideshow while missing more important information coming from the speaker. Some critics have even gone as far to say that it makes people less curious. And if you've ever sat through a confusing PowerPoint at your 8 a.m. lecture that your professor put basically no thought into, you might tend to agree. But is there a brighter future ahead for the program we all love to hate? Well, both PowerPoint and its rivals are incorporating features that attempt to make presentations less linear, such as Zoom features that allow the presenter to access different pieces of information and make the experience less predictable and torpor-inducing without breaking flow. Important in this age of Instagram-addled attention spans. Regardless, it might be worthwhile for us all to just learn how to use PowerPoint correctly. A good presentation should be a useful learning aid even after you've wrapped things up and have snuck out to an expense account lunch. So make your slides informative without cramming so much stuff onto them that no one can read them. Use interesting visuals that help your audience understand instead of pointless clip art and stock photos of business people. And don't just read off the slides verbatim. In my day, we used to call that giving a speech. And speaking of PowerPoints in business, FreshBooks. FreshBooks is the small business accounting software custom built for how you wanna work. The simple way to be more productive, organized, and to get paid quickly. Create and send professional looking invoices in less than 30 seconds. Set up online payments with just a couple of clicks and get paid up to four days faster. Dennis, that's fast. See when your client has seen your invoice and put an end to the guessing games. For your unrestricted 30 day free trial, just go to freshbooks.com forward slash techwiki and enter in techwiki in the how you heard about us section. Thanks FreshBooks, appreciate you. Anyways guys, thank you very much for watching. Make sure to like the video, dislike, check out all our other videos, comment with video suggestions, and don't forget to subscribe and follow and all that fun stuff. We'll see you again one day.
Goodbye.